everybody welcome back to yet another episode of our series power people which profiles in users of the music business industry and today on this very special episode we have with us mrs ramba banerji head marketing communication and member relations at iprs we welcome you here today ma'am yes thank you ajishri and thank you for the nice introduction so uh, ramba ma'am my first question to you is that can you tell us about your journey and how you came to be the head of marketing communication and member relations at iprs tell us about it um uh, yeah ujeshri um uh, like talking about my journey um so my journey uh, like my career uh, started way back um, in 90s okay uh, so yeah so like late in the 90s uh, like i started my career in kolkata um so the thing that worked for me was that uh, like since my childhood uh, like i was brought up in an environment which uh, it was culturally very rich yeah. and was surrounded by creation and creativity so being uh, like from a bengali family music culture uh, like was always a part of my like upbringing and childhood uh, like uh, along with studies and everything so choosing a career in media and entertainment was an obvious choice that because like i was so much in love with content music and everything so i felt that media and entertainment will be one place where i can explore and i can contribute meaningfully uh so starting my journey uh, from there uh, so so my initial years was in print and now okay. media yeah so so like while i was working for print uh, like in the 2000 and late 2000 that is when we saw the uh, the rapid growth of television like and the audio visual mm-hmm. so though the private uh, the television channels were already there from uh, like late 90s uh, uh, like 90s mm-hmm. like 2000 saw the decline of print and the growth of audio visual yeah during my stint in print media i saw that people were transforming and going into the audio visual media uh, yeah. the knack for reading was going down there was a, and there was dwindling readership for the publications yeah. so what we did so so like during my stint in print what we did like was that i explored the audio visual department for the print publication so the audio visual became a kind of a complementary or a complement to the print publication so you have both going on parallelly so while working on uh, the audio visual platforms and exploring the role of audio visual content that is like when i uh, like got fascinated of working more extensively in audio visual and during that time uh, star was growing big in bengal so yeah. in 2007 uh, like 8 they launched star jolsha mm-hmm. and uh, there was a drastic uh, kind of change in the way the content was getting uh, like presented in bengal yeah. so earlier it used to be more of a kind of a saas bahu kind of uh, like content but jolsha showed the way of the new generation of women the changing women mindset in bengal so that was an opportunity which i saw and uh, jolsha was ex- also expanding their uh, team in bengal so that was my shift from print to like television um, and yeah. jolsha television was a kind of a turning uh, point in my life mm-hmm. because the other mediums if you see they have a certain pace but yeah. anyone who has worked in television will like will tell you the pace in which the volume in which the work happens mm-hmm. and being part of the star family anyone who has worked in star uh, the scope is huge uh like whatever uh, we did was like it had to be different it had to be unique and it had to be of a different stature and it was the one of the most you know top most uh, channels in that time star yeah no so the thing was that that when Cha- like like when star jolsha launched in bengal like you already had two very dominant uh, channels there so it was etv bangla and z bangla okay. so star uh, like entered after etv and uh, like and z bangla and etv bangla was later like huh, like bought over by uh, viacom and it became colors bangla yeah so so the huh, though there were two dominant players in the industry star jolsha like soon became the number one bengali gc because of its content offering and yeah. it rightly connect to the audience mindset the psyche of the audience because bengal was also changing the mindset of bengali women was changing and if you see gc channels mostly catered to the 
um, the women or the females, the GC yeah. primarily. Yeah. But huh, but also one more interesting thing is that there was considerable viewership from the male audience also. So everybody was looking out for new content. And yeah. the challenge and the task in hand for us was to establish Dolsha as the number one GC in Bengal. So yeah. that gave me uh, a great opportunity to learn the media and and the entertainment industry and use whatever I knew in marketing and communication, PR, everything to build that channel. So with that learning, it was kind of a great opportunity to understand how your consumer is, to understand the consumer psyche, understanding the marketing, huh, the market nuances. Because uh, for every brand, it is very important. It's not important that what you are saying. It's important what your consumer wants to hear from you. So placing your brand in that way and communicating what connects with your audience is very important. That was a very big learning and, and we saw the results also coming. So when, when, when did you join ITR? Yeah. So having worked there, then I moved to uh, like Mumbai. So I left my hometown Kolkata and I permanently shifted to uh, like Mumbai. So in 2015, I joined Star Plus. Oh, yeah. So like Star gave me or the or this industry gave me the chance of working with the brightest of minds in the media entertainment industry. Mm, definitely. Um, but joining IPRS was a conscious decision. Yeah. Well, see, when you work for a big brand or a very established organization, your learning is very thorough and you are working with the best in the industry. Both yeah. internally and your partners and agencies. Yeah. So while yes, the challenges are very big, the tasks are also very big, the ask is also very big, but you always have a team with whom you are working and you are working with the best. Yeah. Yeah. So that is uh good, but also you are always part of a big team and the best team. Mm -hmm. But you can challenge your abilities where you are leading and there is no one to kind of fall back upon. Mm -hmm. so, so like when I got to know about the role in IPRS or like IPRS reached out to me. Uh, so I found the brand very exciting because when I was in the entertainment industry, uh, like in my previous role, IPRS was a body from which we had to take a license. Yeah. So we always saw it that, yes, we had to comply with something. This is one body which comes to us to take a license, but we never got introduced to the bigger cause for which IPRS is. Mm. So when I was being interviewed for this role, then is when I started like studying about IPRS and I found it very exciting because I, well, I came from the other side of the industry, which was using content, mm. but was not aware of the compliance. Mm. So I found a big opportunity here that this is a brand which has a legacy of 50 years, Yeah, but it is like a startup. Mm. Also, when I joined, there was no marketing PR like department in IPRS or an yeah. exclusive member relationship department. There was a membership department. Mm -hmm. Member relations is a completely different thing because member relations is a department which takes care of uh, like like everything else beyond just your royalties and uh, and licensing yeah. because that's the core business. But how do you as a brand add more value to your members? Mm. That is what member relations is more about. Mm. So, so I saw it as a challenge that I have an experience of working in a big brand or a big team. But mm. once now nothing is there. I don't have anything. Mm. I have to start from scratch. Yeah. And I have to build a brand which has a strong legacy, which is working for a big cause. But there is a lot of resistance towards yeah. the brand. There is a lot of misperception about this brand, negativity around this brand, yet it can play a very big role if it is uh, like produced in that way or it is kind of uh, like uh, like developed in that way and people are not Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so I took up this challenge. Um, mm -hmm. I built the, uh, the marketing PR and the member relations like in IPR is from scratch. And uh, like 2020 is when I joined and like 2024, it has been a long journey and it has been yeah. a very scary oh, one. Yeah. So you know, what does a typical year look like for you in your role at IPR? Uh, see, actually, my day starts like before I enter the office. Okay. 
frankly speaking, because there is so much happening both in the industry and within IPRS that yeah. before we start a day, it's very important that you have clarity on what are the priorities that are lined up on that day, particular day, and the meetings lined up so that you can plan your time and your day accordingly. Mm. So, like I plan it on my way to office because in Mumbai, the traffic is always there. Oh. <laughs> so starting like during my breakfast, I just scribble down whatever is there. I check my calendar and on my way, I just kind of think on the things I can do uh, like differently or, or like what should I prioritize today or how should I conduct the meeting today? What should be my uh, kind of uh, the, the new ideas or something new? Because see, every day what I strive to do is that do something different, which I didn't do the previous day. Yeah. Because Doing the same thing every day becomes very boring and mundane. And you don't also grow as an individual if you keep doing the same stuff every day. So I always try to do something more, something different, uh, like every day. So once in office, the first thing I do, I just pick up my cup of coffee and I sit down to check my mails. Because mm -hmm. I don't like uh, like uh, how to keep my mails pending and not answering them. I yeah. just go through all my mails. Whichever I can like respond back immediately, I do. Whichever I need to do a bit of study and analysis, I kind of just tick them and like keep it for later, uh, like part of the day, I will like sit back and answer. Then the next thing is that I connect with my team. I take quick updates yeah. from them. I brief them on what they need to do that particular day and just a roundup of things happening. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one more very important thing that which I consciously do that because see, I'm I'm coming from a role which is marketing uh, yeah. partnerships collaboration so consciously mm -hmm. I keep at least two to three hours in a day which is my time me time mm -hmm. when I sit down to work on ideas I sit down to work on new proposals what differently I can do where are, I can find new partnerships and opportunities so that two, three hours, I don't uh, kind of, I don't allow or, or or just I keep it for myself Yeah, and do something constructive. Mm. And there are always meetings lined up and uh, I also spend some time with my fellow colleagues and all I just went talk mm. because from there also you get to know a lot of things happening, what is happening in their life, what all new developments are happening in IPRS and obviously members also come to yeah. me and all. So, yeah, it turns out to be quite a long and busy day, almost every day. And the other thing which happens is that because my role, if you have seen, that I have to travel a lot also. Yeah. Because what I realized uh, during COVID, there was no choice. But once COVID was over, I realized that it is very important to be where my members are or where the creators are or mm -hmm. where the industry is. So I travel a lot also. It's not, it, it's not that I just come to office to do my work. Almost uh, like 50% of my days in a month goes in traveling. I make a point to be in, in like different markets, attend conferences, workshops, seminars, because it's very important for IPRs yeah. to be. Yeah. And being yeah. part of communication and leading the communication and PR and the market and the member relations, it becomes a major role for me to be wherever music is being discussed and my members and the creator community is there. So this is how... And it's, and it's quite, uh, so once you go out and meet people in the industry, you will find there's so much to know and learn and contribute. Definitely. That's, definitely. that's very exciting. Yeah. So Ramon, how do you, you know, approach that marketing and communication strategy, strategies, basically in music industry, and particularly regarding rights management and member relations? How? Yeah, see, uh, marketing has different aspects so the marketing that i had done earlier in my career and the marketing pr communication that i i am doing currently in iprs is a bit different uh, because firstly iprs is a non-profit organization so uh, the okay so the revenue that we earn or the revenue that we garner is major is majorly my members royalties okay so we have to be very mindful and about the spends. So we cannot just go and just blow up monies and do uh, very expensive marketing campaigns. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so the approach always is to find out opportunities on which I can uh, like communicate or kind of collaborate with the right kind of people or partners in the industry who believe in the same cause and mission. In that way, you can increase your reach, you can increase your might without 
uh, like having to spend huge monies uh, like for your marketing campaigns. Yeah. One more thing I have realized, or it's a kind of a like a like a like a learning also for everyone. That see the success of your marketing campaign always depends on the strength of your ideas. Yeah. Because if your idea is very strong, if your idea is very unique and innovative, you need not spend a uh, kind of huge monies to kind of make it successful. The strength of the idea will help you connect with your audience. Mm. And that is what I have been striving in IPRS to come up with very unique ideas and a very different way of, of communicating the message. Because if you see the business that IPRS is in, what is it? It is about like talking about managing rights, as you rightly said, like rights management, mm. the legalities involved in licensing and like use and the rightful use of IPs. So face it is very technical. It is related to like legalities and law. So okay. there is every chance of it becoming very boring. Mm -hmm. So here is a it, like there was a big task for me because see I am talking about something which is very technical, uh, which is very boring, which is very confusing because I am talking to people who are creative. Mm -hmm. So I'm not talking about legal terms with a legal community. I'm talking about legal terms, legalities with a community which is creative. Mm. Striking the right balance in my communication is very important. That how do I make my communication exciting and, and kind of very vibrant, yet say the things which are important and needs to be conveyed to everyone. So... When it comes to rights management, the marketing approach is different because there I need to make my point. Yeah. So being a strong voice in the industry through multiple, uh, say, like participating in conferences, uh, in seminars, where people are talking about rights and all. So IPRs need to make its point because all these years, yeah. IPRs has been very wrongly perceived. Mm. Not that IPRs is only here to take a license and take away money from you, but it is not that. IPRS as a copyright society is playing a very big role and plays a very big role because it is one such pillar which is ensuring a smooth flow of revenue and royalties from the creator to the like user back from the user to the creator. So mm. it is an indispensable part of the music industry. You cannot just set it aside that I don't want to hear about IPRS yeah. or I don't want IPRS in my life. So that is there. When it comes to member relations, that's a different thing altogether. Yeah. Today, there is a lot of information all around and my members are exposed to a lot of information every day. Mm -hmm. But having said that, when you're exposed to too much of information, that also becomes too overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to take and what not to. What is right? What is wrong? How much is it for a living for me? So for me, member relations is where I become a confidante, I become a trustworthy friend, I become a constant support from my for my members and go on creating value in their life. Yeah. Starting from like, like hand-holding them to understand the nuances of the music business to training them on the technological uh, changes and evolution happening in the industry. Because today every creator has to know the nuances of the music business. Yeah. Even if they are not doing it themselves, even to appoint their right partners, if they are, not, they are not aware of what is right, what is wrong, they will not be able to choose the right partner in their journey as a creator. Mm. My member relations uh, thing is very different because there I have to create value in the life of the creators and my members through different ways. So I have to go back doing different things so that I don't also turn out to be very boring. Every time I cannot go on do the same thing. Yeah, definitely. So how do I remain relevant in the life of my members is the biggest task for me in member relations. Mm. So how do you, you know, balance the needs and interest of various stakeholders, like including artists, composers, publishers, or the music users in revenue generation strategies, basically? Yeah, it's a very good question because, uh, actually, because see, in IPRS, what you get to uh, see and cater to, there are distinct and separate category of people that you are kind of catering to. Okay. When you are in a brand, suppose you are launching a soap or you are launching a new product, yeah. you identify that, okay, this is my TG, this is the, the, the people I am catering to. Also, when I was in Sage Orsha or in Star Plus, 
I mm. knew who my TG was because I was catering to the um the upcoming uh the um the uh, the changing trends in the life of a female or the women of India, right? So I knew that this is my TG, and I have to in different ways go back to the same like like same people. But when you come to IPRS, everyone is different. Like why I say this, in IPRS, you have the creators. Also, when you're talking to a creator, there are different categories of creators. Yeah. There is one creator like who is uh, like from like Mumbai or Delhi, who are into rock, pop. They are exposed to the Western world. They know everything about how music business is happening. So yeah. when you are engaging with them or interacting with them you have to be a very different person because you have to appear to them yes i am at par with them or i know what they need from me but the moment you leave the metros and you go into the um, the regional markets or into the interiors of india they are also creator but they are a completely different set of creators Hmm. When I joined IPRS, because this is the learning for any marketer, but in IPRS, it is more important because see, I have to build that trust with my member because it's IPRS is for the members. It is by the members and of the members. We don't exist if my members are not there. I don't hmm. exist if my members can't trust me. I don't exist if my members don't find that comfort zone being with me or IPRS. Yeah. So, time I'm reaching out to my members I have to be them mm -hmm. and every member is different somebody from Kolkata will be different compared to who is from Chandigarh and Punjab uh, from south it will be different because everybody has a different culture a different kind of an environment they are working and they have grown up so I have to be relevant to all of them then there is also another set of people who are the music users mm -hmm. So they are the business houses. Also in the business houses, you have different kinds of people. Yeah. There are people who are event organizers. There are people who are the biggest of corporates. So yeah. the communication that is going out through all the platforms of IPRS, everyone should find relevance in it. Yeah. Today, when like say somebody from YouTube or Google or Meta is reading my posts, yeah. they think, yes, this is a brand which is at par with the industry. Again, an like event organizer, say from uh, like Patna, he also should not think, oh my God, this, this brand, though, like IPRS is something which I don't connect to at all. It's better I avoid IPRS. And that is what had like have been happening. People, some people found it overwhelming. Some people found it very confusing. Some people found that, oh my God, if I go to IPRS, I don't know what all things I will get entangled with. So, it is very important to understand what they need from IPRS, what is their expectation from IPRS, and then accordingly catering to all those needs in a way that slowly we are able to build trust amongst all my target audience. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. So, uh, so this question just came into my mind right now. But how many, uh, you know, members you cater at a time? How many? How many members? members you cater IPRS caters okay so currently we have a member uh, base of uh, like nearly 15,000 okay okay but we have regional teams okay uh, because it is very important uh, for us to also have that regional connect yeah it is not possible to uh, like cater to everyone sitting in the Mumbai head office Hmm. Because every region has its own sentiment, own culture, own ways of working and everything. So we have regional teams. We hmm. also have a regional committee. So we have uh, made this regional committee, which is comprising of uh, six uh, like author, composer and publisher members from our regional markets. Oh, so we have eight regional committees because see, they are the extended uh, eyes, ears, arms, legs of IPRS. Hmm. Because they are the creators, they are connected to that community. So, yeah. a, uh, so a creator might find it comfortable to express certain things or they might be able to understand their problems better and communicate it back to IPRS. See, end of the day, it is our objective or our responsibility yeah. to understand what is going in the life of our members and helping to resolve whatever is bothering and disturbing them. So that they can succeed in their career as creators. 
Also, mm-hmm. you note that language is a big challenge big. in India. Yeah. yeah, because every region has a different language. We have so many languages. So language becomes a big barrier when it comes to efficient communication. Yeah. Because uh, beyond the point, one person cannot know more than maximum, I think, three, four languages very, very well. So mm-hmm. communicating efficiently in the regional language is something which we are trying to solve because everybody wants to consume content in their own language. And that is what we are seeing every passing day, that people prefer consuming information com- like, la- uh, co- like content in their own language. Mm-hmm. So that's one challenge we strive to solve in the coming months and years. Yeah. So what initiatives or campaigns have you led that you are you know proud of it uh, favorites yeah yeah see that's uh, so like there have been multiple things that we uh, did over the last yeah. four years so mm-hmm. when i joined as a uh, in 19 uh, so in 2020 sorry in 2020 yeah. i joined in february and mm-hmm. from may onwards uh, the nation or the world were like went into covid and lockdown yeah but uh, while, yes, it was a very a sad time for the entire human uh, year, the, mm-hmm. like, uh, the world and everyone, oh, yeah. uh, it also opened new opportunities because mm-hmm. that was a time when people had taken a break from their regular life. Regular. Yeah. So the hustle bustle of every day had kind of slowed down. And we took that opportunity to reach out to our members and the creator community at large because uh, our members and the creators are very busy because they are, they don't have a fixed like schedule or a routine. They are always on the go. They are creating like most of their time are spent in studios or with their uh, like art, like kind of collaborations and all those things. But during COVID, because work had taken a back seat, we had that opportunity to connect with them. Mm-hmm. And it and it like actually worked in our favor mm-hmm. because physically reaching out to everyone is always not possible and it's like humanly not possible because such a vast country. But that was the time when also people took to online. So people mm-hmm. were not re- but like kind of didn't have any reservation that why I'm online or why I need to connect online. Why can't you come and do the meeting in person? Everybody had to connect online. So we took that opportunity. So during COVID uh, in 2020, we had launched a series called Creative Shala. Because that was also an opportunity to uh, add value to our members. So what we did that we got our uh, leading members or the or the ones who are already established. Also, they had time to spend with us because it was a kind of a slowdown period. So we invited them them, and we hosted uh, sessions. I think we had done around 18 to 20 episodes, uh, wow. all our leading uh, like celebrity members. And we mm-hmm. invited the budding creators to come and attend the, uh, the sessions. Session. It was a nice uh, candid uh, conversation happening between the leading or the established creators and the ones who are wanting to now build their career in music. So Mr. Mayur Puri, who is also our director, he conducted those sessions and wow. that was the first uh, initiative from IPRS and also it helped to uh, give a sense that see IPRS is now doing something different mm-hmm. and it was highly appreciated so that is how the journey started through Creative Shala. It became mm-hmm. the first forum to like get the community together and mm-hmm. start changing the, uh, the image of IPRS from just a royalty management society to a rather a big society which is also trying to build a community to help support and kind of uh, like protect and promote the creators mm-hmm. uh, from there we also launched another initiative called credit the creators mm-hmm. what we realized during that time only that a lot of music was being consumed digitally yeah and on radios everywhere but mm-hmm. but the credits were not proper because yeah. the digital with the pro- like with the uh, like with the digital uh, ways of working, there was no physical evidence of your work. Today you don't have a CD or a cassette or anything or an inlay card uh, like the way we used to have earlier. So mm-hmm. the proof of your work is a credit. 
today yeah. if the credit is missing or in radio if no one is mentioning who the lyricist or composer is there is no way that you will come to know that who the lyricist and composer is yeah that is what started bothering us and our community of creators also that where is our credit people mm -hmm. are see and we all know that during covid music was one way of respite people yeah. uh, kind of took uh, like solace in music while music played such a big role in the life of us during covid we saw that the creators were missing no credit for the creators who created the music That's then we launched the campaign credit the creator okay. we said that like we appreciate your love for music but don't forget to acknowledge credit, credit those who are behind this wonderful creation mm -hmm. that also received huge traction and the good part is that See, we are a community of creators. So our creative members, they only came and joined us to amplify the campaign. Yeah. Third was one more thing we noticed gradually was that the representation of women uh, like creators in the industry. Why? We wanted to ask the question why. While we have singers, we have actresses, like film stars everywhere. But why in the creative uh, industry or people behind the scene in music industry, we don't have enough representation of women oh. we launched her music as a campaign to mm -hmm. try to find the answers to this and in which ways we can uh like kind of address this concern so this is our ip we had launched a campaign we had launched and we are still continuing with that and today when we had started the campaign we had a like a member count like female member count or women creator count of around 200 Today, wow. we have nearly 1,000 female creators as our members, but it is still very low, and we are still uh, kind of going on working on this to improve the representation of women. Then the other burning uh, challenge for us is the compliance. There is very, very low compliance towards music licensing and all. So we launched our campaign, License Liakia. Mm. So in every way, we started spreading awareness. We wanted to ask the question that what is stopping you from taking a license? And we need a drastic mindset shift because in India, we all love music and we see music as a commodity like air and water. It is always there for me free of cost. So the concept of paying for music is not there. People try yeah. to do music, like music for free. So License Diakya is a campaign and it still continues to be one of our key initiatives to keep on building and creating that that mindset shift towards compliance and paying for music, fairing mm -hmm. of music. Yeah. Definitely. Recently, we also launched a kind of a series of workshops for our members learn and earn. Because yeah. we get a lot of queries from our members that I'm not getting royalties or I'm not seeing that kind of money is coming to me from, for, like, from my music. So mm -hmm. we said, see, now the industry has changed drastically. Have you adapted to the new ways of working? Have you adapted yourself to the new technologies? So we said you can only earn if you learn. So we started the learn and earn workshop that learn first, learn and then earn. Um, cities, and we reached out to our members to educate them on the, on the latest trends and technologies and the way the music business works. This year, we have launched the campaign My Music, My Rights. Yeah. This campaign, because see, we saw that a lot of young creators have come into the industry and they're desperate to make a name and have their work out. But mm -hmm. in this desperation, they are like missing on the nuances of like protecting their IPs. Mm -hmm. so, so we said that don't be desperate. Understand what your rights are. It's yeah. your music. It's your right. We are there to protect and support you, but it is your IP. So you have to stand up for your rights. And we started this education program on how today's independent artists and music creators of today can protect their IPs, manage their like their rights well, and earn more from the music that they are making. Yeah. So this is a constant and so like like these are all constant and like endeavors from IPRS, and we'll keep on doing this. Mm. That's this, good. That's yeah. good. So in your you know in your opinion, what are some of the most significant developments or trends that have shaped the you know music industry in today's time and especially in terms of rights management and member relations yeah see the significant change that we are seeing is obviously the digitalization and the dependency on technology 
and because now the content has gone so widespread mm. with the like with the power of technology and the platforms that like that have come in rights management has become extremely crucial yeah If today your content is out on a digital platform means it is available to everyone but if you are not putting out the content in the right format or you are not protecting it in the right way or if you are not aware of how to manage and uh, like aware of the laws and the regulations there is every chance that you will like like uh, like lose the authorship or the ownership of your own content so digitalization has definitely shaped the industry in the recent times and hence with digitalization rights management has become extremely crucial we mm -hmm. have one of the best copyright laws in the world today yeah. uh, like with the 2012 amendment of the copyright law we have the one of the best copyright laws in favor of author composers yeah. but many a times author composers themselves are not aware of their rights and hence mm -hmm. they lose uh, their rights and they end up signing contracts which right. they later on they feel they find that it has taken away a lot of my uh, yeah. hope of earning the second is that very important is that how ai and all this will shape the industry because a lot of mm -hmm. artists have already adapted to uh, the ai technologies they are working yeah. with ai yeah so it's now to see that how ai will shape and how regulation can monitor the use of ai driven content and how the rights of creators and their rights can be managed in an ai world also there will be another set of creators who might not be so conversant with technology so what happens to them how as like as a society iprs or the society as a whole or the government or everyone can also protect them and protect their uh, like their talent mm -hmm. they might have the talent but they might not have the no the knowledge or the technology so how do we like coexist in a environment like that where the talent and the creators rights are protected yeah Coming to member relations um see for any brand today your consumer experience is very important okay. you have to live the talk what you are saying as a brand you have to live the talk and you have to create a meaningful difference in the life of your consumers so when i say consumer it is both my members the creators and the users mm -hmm. people are now today like every like every platform is trying to enhance the experience on their platform so mm -hmm. for iprs also it has become very important and technology is playing a big role in iprs but how do we make the experience on our different platforms mm -hmm. uh like very easy and and a, and, a, and a great experience for both my user like for my members and people who are coming to iprs for licensing mm -hmm. it's just not only member relations it is also about the relation we are try we are being able to build with the yeah. different stakeholders in the industry like through technology through a uh, great uh, like customer service yeah see today we are all used to get a like suppose you have sent a mail today the expectation is that within a certain time within few hours yeah. i should get a response Yeah. So at IPRS, when I talk about member relations, those are like are also my priorities. That how efficiently and how fast I can cater to my members' like queries. Yeah. How because my members are all scattered across the country. How can I also remotely help and support my members? And every time it will not be possible for me to physically be in a place and help them out. But how do I then create a channel? so which i can like even if they are remotely placed right. how can we in their life and make a meaningful difference mm -hmm. is that all the different things that we are working on and we will be working on so that we are there where my member needs me yeah but i mean the music industry is undergoing you know significant transformations also in these times and so how do you adapt iprs revenue generation strategies to stay you know relevant and profitable in this time also yeah uh see firstly speaking we are like as i said we are a non like not for profit organization yeah. so but our endeavor is always to get as much revenue possible for our members mm -hmm. for that technology is playing a very big role 
because monitoring the consumption like of music and it starts from data registration yeah. so a lot of people have a misconception that okay i have become a member of iprs and because i'm a member of iprs i will start getting royalties mm. that is not how it works yeah. like becoming a member of iprs is the first step because you are joining a society which will support like like which will protect your rights and get you like your royalties right mm. but to like for that you have to get your data register mm. and there are like so much of data in the like so many songs being made every day yeah. so that many amount of data is getting into the iprs database so our work starts from like member enrollment which is also now online so technology is helping us because your journey starts from becoming a member then mm. getting your data and work details correctly registered with iprs so that is also a huge work that happens at, like in the back end at iprs because clean complete data is the source of revenues then monitoring the consumption of the music wherever the music is getting played of my members the songs being exploited mm. striking the licensing deals with all these players who are using the music yeah and the right licensing deals so doing negotiation and getting the right licensing deals getting those monies into iprs now the money has come now the money has to get matched mm. get the uh, the usage data from the platforms or from the places where the music was playing now it has to be matched with the database we have of our members work accordingly then split the royalty to everyone then distributing that royalty and paying those amount to the members bank account mm. so it's a huge machinery that is working in the back end so technology obviously will play a big role mm. over and above this another important thing is awareness right as a creator creators are very busy creating their music so many a times i think almost ev like every time they spend 95% of their effort in creating the song but mm -hmm. one more very important aspect is getting the data and the registrations correct where the artist you should like usually leave it to somebody else okay i have made the song now go and do it or they registered the song very late and they miss on their royalties mm -hmm. we always tell our members and and every creator we meet that the amount of effort and money that you spend on your creation if not same but spend a considerable amount of time to ensuring that your data is correct your data is registered in a copyright society the, the data that you are handing over to the platforms through your distributor those are rightly reflected on different platforms because mm -hmm. today your revenue your credit everything is linked to the data that is making circles in the industry mm -hmm. so that is one thing all this ensure that the revenue is rightly going back to the uh, like to the right holders or the yeah. correct, or the correct person the other aspect is the licensing so we have to also make the licensing process very convenient so earlier people had to come to our office or it was all manual now it is like entirely online mm -hmm. because the revenue can only be distributed if the revenue is coming in smoothly into iprs so we are also making the licensing processes very convenient and easy we have the entire tariff present on the iprs website so there is no loophole or confusion or any gray area in terms of your licensing and uh, the, the tariffs that we charge for your uh, like uh, the, the consumption and usage um, of the music. yeah so yeah. in all this way it is not just one strategy that works multiple ways in which we are trying to ensure um, that um, yeah the yeah, revenue that is getting generated is mm -hmm. rightly generated rightly licensed the money is collected and it go uh, and it is going back to the creators and the rightful owners of the music which are the publishers authors and composers yeah definitely definitely so in your view what we can expect in music business landscape in you know 2024 uh see 2024 is a very interesting year why yeah. i'm saying this if you see lot of uh, because digital streaming has now come up as one of the major sources of revenue in the music industry mm -hmm. so if you go through all the studies you will see a uh, almost two third of the revenue is coming from the digital sources today 
for the for the creator and the industry but in india subscriptions are very low so like most of it is free consumption of music or the ad or the ad driven uh, like like the the ad driven models so 2024 if you see all streaming platforms are now pushing for subscription based models yeah so it's a transition phase in the music industry today because when you are shifting the gears there has to be some jerk happening somewhere so we have to wait and see how 2024 reacts to the new uh, the pricing models and the subscription based uh, kind of models that the streaming platforms are trying to push oh. and introduce so that is there 2024 will also see a huge uh, adoption of technology amongst the creator community mm. so also it is down to see how ai shapes up in our country yeah uh, our like laws are quite in place but like how the changes are happening so drastically we may have to or we might have to uh, kind of look, huh, like relook at our laws mm. Are the rights of the creators and the right owners of 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 music? We have to ensure how we can push fair use of music, fair consumption of music. Yeah. So all these things are there for like twenty twenty four, and the biggest thing I think which I like needs to be done is to be like we need to build awareness amongst all of us. Yeah. See, as users today, every user in India will play a very big role. Definitely. because the music market the consumer market who are consuming music is very big very if they come forward to support music if they come forward to kind of embrace ways to promote and pay for music in india i don't think uh the business like will see any challenge because there is such a big market for music in india mm -hmm. but the thing is that the pay model like people have to start paying for music yeah and i'm very hopeful that 2024 should start seeing those changes yeah definitely the one more thing is that compliance yeah and enforcement mm. so this is like these are the two areas where we like need to work a lot definitely. because we have the best copyright law but when it comes to enforcement we don't see that kind of a uh, Uh, kind of stringent ha huh, support because see people don't care today uh, like infringement of copyright is a criminal offense non billable like criminal offense mm. but if the law is stating that it's a non billable criminal offense then why is people are people so casual about it mm. so we need intervention from every corner every quarter of the uh, like of, of 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 the industry even from the authorities government But Yeah. to ensure that a law has been led how are we enforcing it mm. we have to be more respectful towards the law of the land and come together to support and find a place See, we are not here to disturb others businesses we understand that you also have your business uh, like priorities and all so yeah. if we can arrive at a sweet spot that it's a win win for everyone in the industry because today if we don't support the creator community the creativity of our country then what will be the motivation for the future gen like generation to come into this field that's true that's true so you know looking ahead what do you envision for the future you know of marketing communication member relations at iprs and how do you plan to contribute that vision that you have in your mind yeah see for me uh, what i plan to now do from here is to build a very strong community of uh, of 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 creators in india iprs because see, the role iprs plays is is very unique yeah. see we are a body we are a very neutral body we don't have any business interest our existence is only for the creators okay. Okay? as we say iprs is for the members of the members and by the members so this is not a, a institute which is running for one person or a families or a kind of a a uh, stake or, or, or like shareholders interest it is running for the interest of the creators and the and the owners of music like like you know, like those who are the rightful owners of music so 
we have a great opportunity to build a community around IPRS and IPRS should become one of the very trustworthy friend, supporter and a knowledge center. Today, anyone wanting to know anything, any support, they should come to IPRS and we should be able to create a flow of uh, information, knowledge within the community. Uh, transparency is one very big aspect in every uh, functionality in IPRS from distribution, documentation, we ensure transparency and yeah. communication will play a very big role in communicating that. Yeah. What we do, what we stand for, how we function, uh, like uh, the Copcom marketing team will play a very big role in effectively communicating it back to the creators and the members and the and the community. Because when you are managing somebody's work, when you are managing somebody's royalties, building trust is very important. Yeah. So the big task for me is to build that trust, mm -hmm. build that uh, a feeling uh, like a feeling of belonging, belonging in IPRS. And IPR is emerging as a body which is playing a very big role in the life of the creators. Yeah. One is protecting your rights, getting your royalties, and also creating a platform where talent will be discovered, nurtured, and promoted. Mm -hmm. Because see, we have reciprocal agreements with, uh, like with so many countries and societies outside India. Mm -hmm. so if you just imagine the opportunity so much Today, IPRS can effectively, if it wants, and it will take time because uh, uh, we will need a good uh, backend team and everything, a, thought, yeah. a, kind of a, a kind of a policy, everything. But how can IPRS also help in cross-border, uh, like uh -huh, like exchange of uh, uh, of culture? And yeah. music? so, if we want, IPRS can slowly start developing into a like in, like into an institute. Mm which will cater to maybe a uh, kind of a go-to destination for any creator yeah. in India. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ramba, ma'am, for your time. It was our pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah.